Hey everyone, Nick Dearbird is here teaching you financial modeling. And today we're talking about grouping objects together with Python lists. This is part of our segment on going beyond an initial Python script, how to uh, you know, learn the Python basics so that we can go and build out financial models using Python. So we have talked a little bit about lists in the course already. Um, but now we're going to learn a little bit more about working with them um, and some of the useful patterns uh, using lists. So, um, you know, we already learned that lists are one of these uh, kind of container data types. In other words, it's uh, an object that holds other objects within it. Um, and so here, uh, you know, as we start to look at this example, uh, we can see here the inputs uh, one, two, three. We have the uh, numbers one, two, and three stored within this list, uh, which we're calling inputs. Um, and so these lists allow us to group uh, this one, two, and three together into a single variable that we can then, uh, you know, do other things with. And so a very common pattern in Python and in a lot of programming languages is uh, to create uh, a list, an empty list uh, before a loop. And then as you go through the loop, you add items to the list um, to build up the list through the loop. So, uh, you know, here we're looking at, uh, you know, basically, we want to take our inputs and we want to add 10 to the inputs and have the outputs be just, you know, each of the inputs with 10 added to them. And so this pattern accomplishes that in that we have the for loop here and the for loop is going to go through each one of these inputs one at a time, pulling each one out. And as we go through, we're going to be adding 10 to whatever that input is. And then we're going to be appending that value onto the outputs list. So this append is a new function that we're learning about here. Append just adds an item onto the end of a list. So this list was empty to start with, but as we go through, we're gonna add each input plus 10 into the output list. So then at the end of that, we would have 11, 12, 13 in the list. Uh, and then this last part here is just showing uh, another way that you can add items into a list because append will always put the item at the end of the list. Insert allows you to put the item at any position in the list. So here uh, we wanna insert uh the this a as the first value here in the list and so that's why when we take a look at what uh the resulting list is um then we get uh a first and then 11 12 13 which was the original list we had from this part of the code and you may be wondering why it's zero to insert this a at the beginning um, and that gets into zero-based indexing in Python, which we'll talk about here in a moment. So, uh, you know, one other very commonly used functionality of lists is indexing and slicing lists. So that allows you to pull certain items out of the list. So you can either pull a single item out of the list by its position in the list, or you can pull out a whole uh, you know, sequence of items uh, by, again, their, their indices in the list. Um, so here, you know, we're looking at an example of my list having A, B, C, and D in it. Um, and now we're gonna look at how we can index that list to pull certain items out of it. And so here's where, um, coming back around to the zero-based indexing in Python. So zero is going to get us the first item in the list. Here, if we do my list bracket zero, that gets us A. If we do my list brackets one, that gets us B. 
And so that is definitely counterintuitive um, for a lot of people. Uh, but this is the way that the majority of pro programming languages work, that indexing is zero based. Zero is gonna give you the first item. One is gonna give you the second item and so on. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about that um, when we look at the Jupyter Notebook example. Then also you can uh, count backwards from the end of the list. Um, so minus one, any negative number is gonna be counting from the end of the list. So minus one is gonna get you the last item in the list. Here that's gonna be D. Um, if you did minus two, that would be the second to last item in the list. So that would give you the C. And then uh, that's indexing. And then the other part is slicing. Where slicing, we grab multiple things out of the list at once. And it gives us a new list, which has a subset of the objects which were in the original list. So here, um, the slice is defined by the colon, having a colon in here. And so when you slice, it's, uh, you know, the full format is, uh, you know, from this item uh, up to, but not including this item uh, before and after the colon. So slicing from one to three, again, one is uh, talking about the second item, remember, because of that uh, zero-based indexing, and three is talking about the fourth item. So it's from the second and up to, but not including the fourth item. So that means we get the second and the third item as a result. Um, but either side of this um, slice is optional. And if you exclude it, it's just gonna go to the end of the list in that direction. So having uh, nothing on this side and then up until but not including the last item, that's gonna be every item in the list up until the last item. So just chopping the last item off of this list. Whereas if we, uh, you know, before the colon we specify it, but after the colon we don't, that means it's gonna go all the way to the end of the list uh, for the right-hand side. Uh, but for here, uh, we're gonna start from index one, which is the second item. So this is gonna be every item from the second going all the way until the end of the list. So that's why we get BCD as a result of this. So you can use this to grab whatever uh, objects you want out of your list. So let's go ahead and jump over to the Jupyter Notebook example where we'll look at these things in a little bit more detail. So, um, you know, first, let's here just look at a list. Um, and so we define lists using these brackets. Uh, when you just have brackets out here on an assignment, uh, that's saying I wanna make a list. And uh, when we look at what that list is, we just see brackets here, again, representing that that is a list. Um, and if we check the type of that, uh, then we are in going to, in indeed see that it is a list. Um, and so, you know, we have this list and we know that it's empty right now, uh, but we can add items onto a list using append. So here we're gonna append five, and then we're going to look at the list again. And now what, might be a little counterintuitive to people is now you come back over here and you check this again now all of a sudden it's changed now it has five in it and that's because we modified the same list to add five to it we didn't uh, redefine a different list uh, which is going to be separate from what was up here it's the same list and so if we just run that code again then we're going to see it's actually changed and now has a five in it and then as we go and add additional items, they always add on to the end. So we append six and then we append seven. Now we have five, six, and seven in the list, which again, you know, carries through to anywhere that you're using this same list. 
Um, so that's also uh, gets into another pitfall that a lot of people hit as they begin to build things out in Python and Jupyter is the execution order of your cells can actually change the results that you're gonna get. Uh, as you saw before, when I first went through and I ran this, my list was empty. And now that I come back and run it, my list is five, six, seven. And so if you run your cells in different orders, you get different results. And so, um, you know, definitely as you, uh, you know, get things working in your model, you want to often just restart kernel and uh, run all cells. That's going to give you a new session and just start everything, run everything in order. And that way you'll be sure that it's going to execute exactly like when someone else is going to be running your model. So um, then getting into uh, talking a little bit more about indexing. Again, we have this zero based indexing. Zero gets you the first item. One gets you the second item, um, et cetera. Uh, you know, going all on to whatever number, when I get the 10th item, just put index nine, just subtract one from whatever the index is. Um, and if you want to understand more why most programming languages uh, set it up this way, uh, I've included a resource here where you can read a lot more about that. Uh, but that's definitely outside of the scope of this class. That's more of a computer science concept. Uh, all we need to know is that it is zero-based indexing. We do put a zero if we want to look up the first item for our purposes. We don't really need to know why, but for the curious people, I just added that here. Um, so then we're jumping back into adding items to lists, uh, but looking at the insert function method instead of the append method of the list. So append again always puts the item at the length at the end of the list, whereas insert will add it into any position. Um, so again, we're working with this same uh, my list that we had from before, five, six, seven in it right now, um, and now we're going to insert uh, at the position zero at index zero, which would be the first item we're going to insert woo. And so then when we do that and we look at the result, then we're gonna have first woo and then our original five, six, seven. And you can insert at any position within the list. Uh, so here I want to insert at the second position, or sorry, index two, which would be the third uh, object in the list. I'm gonna insert a 10. And so indeed, then you see the third item in the list here is indeed a 10. So whatever uh, index you put here, it's going to put that uh, item, that object at that position in the list. So then we can look at using indexing and slicing to look up items within the list. Um, so again, zero is gonna give us the first item here, the woo. Uh, four should give us the fifth item in the list, uh, which indeed it does. Um, now, if you put an index that does not exist in the list, then we're actually going to get an error from that. Uh, so here I'm trying to look up the, the thousand and one item in the list. And when I do that, then I get index error, list index out of range. So the error is telling you exactly what happened here the index that you passed on this list is out of the range of possible indexes on this list, right? Zero should work, one should work, two, three, and four are the possible indexes here. As soon as I go to five, uh, then I'm gonna start getting that index error. Um, so you have to actually put an index which exists within the list. Um, or otherwise you're going to get this index error. Now the one you know, somewhat exception to that is you can use negative numbers um, to index the list as well. And that's gonna count from the end of the list. So minus one is going to get you the last item in the list, which again, my list looks like that. We are getting the last item here. 
and negative two is going to get us the, the next to last item in the list. Um, and this index error can come up in the other direction as well. We try to look at, you know, a thousand uh, items before the end of the list. That's, you know, way beyond the beginning of this list. So once again, we're out of range and we get an index error. So that's indexing about pulling a single item out of the list. Now we have slicing, which pulls multiple objects out of this list and creates a new list from those objects. So here, um, remember again, the slicing is really defined by this colon. Um, and that colon means I want to get from index one up until not including index three and so that's from the second item up until but not including the fourth item um, so again showing what my list is here um, and i run this so i want to get from the second item up until but not including the fourth item i get the second item up until but not including the fourth item so that's why we get five and ten here um, and leaving either side of the colon empty again we'll just uh you know let it continue all the way to the end of the list um in whatever direction so leaving the right side of the colon empty will go all the way to the end of the list leaving the left side of the colon empty will go all the way to the beginning of the list um and so this is saying from index one until the end which means from the second item until the end and that's why we get this portion of the list and then this one says uh you know all the way from the beginning of the list up until the but not including the last item in the list and so that's why we get everything except for this last seven in the list here um and then the lab exercises here um, would be the working with lists section of the lab exercises. Um, and so uh, this is going to test a few different things, uh, the loop building pattern, uh, adding objects in the lists, and uh, also indexing and slicing of the lists as well. Um, so that concludes our section on Python lists and grouping um, objects together using them. Next time we're going to come back to instead group logic together instead using functions. Thanks for listening and see you next time.